Starlink Direct to Satellite just came out of beta about a month ago. I've been using it ever since out in the backcountry and all my hikes, including up in the Sierras, up to Mount Whitney, and really tough canyons and areas surrounded by high peaks. I've been using it on Android and iPhone. It's not perfect, but it does work, and I'll show you how it works. But more interesting, I thought, was the sneak peek of the satellite data that I got as part of this testing, including being able to load maps into the phone over satellite. Now you can think of Starlink DTC as basically having cell towers on the satellites, except that the satellites are moving thousands of miles an hour above the Earth. So what happens is that the phone is constantly connecting to new satellites. Now, if you look at this log of my satellite connection on a terrestrial connection, when I'm just at home, I'm connected to one tower and it stays connected to the tower as long as I'm roughly in the same place. But standing in the same place in the back country, you can see that I have multiple satellites connecting, you know, a couple times a minute here, and that's because they're streaming overhead. The effect of this is that the battery burns down quicker. Now, there's a lot of variables in measuring battery drain on a phone, but I found that in general across Android and iPhone, I'm losing about twice as much battery as I would if my phone was just connected to a terrestrial tower in the front country. So on the iPhone, I'm looking at somewhere between 4 to 6% an hour when I'm out in the back country. Overall, messaging and the connection to the satellite worked marginally better than it did in beta. Still not perfect, but, you know, it connected a lot of the times. And when it did connect, I was able to get a text message telling me that I was connected. I'd also get these little indicators up top telling me I was connected to the satellite. And some apps even had little, uh, you know, little indicators there telling me that I'm on satellite and the experience is going to be different, which I thought was an interesting uh, way to do it and definitely helpful. Sending messages worked as expected. I tried satellite to cell phone, cell phone to satellite, satellite to satellite, you know, anywhere from, you know, under a minute to several minutes to go through. There were some little, you know, little glitches here and there. Sometimes I'd get duplicates coming through like I did in beta, but overall, much better. I would say anecdotally, probably connected out in the outdoors about 75% of the time when I wasn't in a regular cell service. When I did a poll on my YouTube channel, here's what you guys said about your connection out of beta. You know, it's a mixed bag, I think. Overall, if I just needed to, say, message my wife or tell her that I'm running late or something, I'd generally be able to do it uh, in a non-emergency scenario. But you can use this for emergencies as well. It does support text over 911. One of the new things advertised is being able to send your location via text. It's, this is not automatic. This is on demand, but it is an easy way to share a precise location with a loved one. Now, on Android, I went into Google Maps and I was able to share my location uh, in real time through Google Maps. There was a little disclaimer saying it's on satellite and it's not going to be the same experience, but it was a real time share. So with something like this, you could potentially, you know, do what you do on an in-reach like the location sharing functionality through Google Maps. So I thought that was really neat. Now, what really got me excited was the data. And the data is not officially launched, I don't think, till October 1st. But I did notice when I was playing around in the settings on Android that it said several apps were available, including Onyx, All Trails, CalTopo, and Overwatch and Rescue uh, to use with data. Just as an aside, I tried using data on the iPhone, and the apps didn't really work the way they did on Android. So I'll show you the Android ones because this is a little bit better. So first, I tried the AccuWeather app which was actually pretty good. Within a minute, I got a full uh, weather report, which was great. And again, this is something you could do on uh, inReach. Now you can do it on the phone. Then I went into CalTopo. I didn't have any maps offline here, so I tried loading map sheets in using satellite data. And lo and behold, it, it took a while, but I was able to load these USGS quads in. These are raster uh, map tiles here. So, you know, not a small data load, but they did come through. And uh, very cool that you can load map files over the satellite. From there, I went over to OnX and I got a little, uh, little box telling me that this is gonna be a satellite experience, which is cool. And I got a little loading symbol telling me things were loading and it says satellite up top, but nothing ever came across. And remember, these aren't officially out. These aren't officially released. So, uh, you know, this is probably just working out some kinks here, but excited that they know about it and that they're taking advantage of it. 
Next, I loaded up all trails and uh, played around with it a little bit. It was kind of confusing knowing what worked and what didn't work over satellite, but I was able to share a live share link, which is basically, you know, breadcrumb tracking over before it was sell, but hopefully now it will be a satellite as well. I was able to send that out and uh, my wife was able to open it on the other side. So I thought that was a real handy feature. Uh, but overall, in all trails, I didn't really get any maps. I wasn't really sure what I could use or what I couldn't use. I also noticed an Overwatch and Rescue app. I reached out to them to see if I could do a test over satellite. You launch the app, you swipe on the bottom here, and it basically tees up a text message with your latitude and longitude. You just hit send. And uh, when we were going back and forth, the messages went back and forth very quickly. Usually within a minute or so, they knew my location. And uh, I thought it worked really well. I think in the future, they might be moving this chat into the app over data. I'm not quite positive. I'll let you know if that happens. But it would be nice to either have a, a choice, right, to go on your standard text or within the app if you wanted to. Now, I think data over satellite is probably the most exciting thing here, and I think this is going to be the future of what's happening with connectivity in the backcountry. I think it's exciting, but I think there are still some challenges that really haven't been thought out. And this is, you know, this is the first toe in the water in terms of this technology and brand new. So I'm not faulting anyone for this, but I think, first of all, within an app, I would love to know what features are available over satellite and which ones are not. Maybe it's just as simple as disabling or graying out anything thing you can't do over satellite, but uh, I think that needs to be handled. Also, I'd like to see uh, in terms of data payloads, maybe for the mapping, you know, people like Onyx or All Trails or even CalTopo making a very lightweight vector-based map set that loads, you know, over satellite data more quickly. And also, I mentioned this in my uh, test of the beta service of Starlink DTC, but I think we need something in between just regular connected mode and airplane mode, maybe like a backcountry mode, whether it's manual or automatic. But I think a user should be able to say, you know, what do I want the device to be checking in terms of satellite services and how often? And it just does it like an in-reach. It goes through and, you know, if you're location sharing every 10 minutes, it just does it every 10 minutes or whatever you specify. I think something like that would make a lot of sense. Now, would I recommend getting it? I wouldn't trust my life with this service alone, but I think as a supplement to something like a Garmin inReach plan, maybe the low enabled plan where you have SOS there, it works over 100% of the globe. And then having this as something where you can do non-emergency texting or data, I think it could make a lot of sense depending on the type of phone you have. Uh, you know, this is included with some T-Mobile plans. And even if you're not a T-Mobile customer here in the States, you can still get this as a non-T-Mobile customer, which I think is a great thing. One of the advantages here too, is this works with non sort of satellite enabled cell phones. Any cell phone theoretically that can connect to an LTE tower can use this service. So it'll be open up to many more phones. And on the support page, I see the list of phones growing all the time. I don't think this is a technical uh, hurdle here, like I mentioned, but I think it's more of like a regulatory and a software hurdle. But if you just have a regular phone, you don't want to buy like the newest iPhone or the newest Android phone, this could be a great way to have, you know, satellite connectivity, uh, which I think is a good thing. And I think overall, this is like the first step into a world that's going to make satellite communications or communications in the backcountry much different. Now, I mentioned earlier, October 1st is when the data service is officially launching. After October 1st, I will do a deeper dive into all of these apps and see exactly how they work and and, uh, you know, what kind of cool, exciting new tools we might have available to us out in the backcountry. All right, guys, uh, hopefully this is helpful. If you have an experience with, uh, you know, using this out of beta, let me know in the comments. I'm sure it'll be helpful for other folks as well. And stay safe, and I'll see you on the trails.